All right, so here we are working on the water fill system. I'm gonna, everyone's been asking, please show how you do that. I'm going to show that right now. We have not completed it all yet, but we have the prototype. This is the starting point. This is a temperature controller. This one is made by Haas Manufacturing Company. So we have hot and cold that come in. It gets mixed. We set it to 80 degrees right there. It's gonna come out and it's gonna go to our sprinkler system essentially. Yes, was there a professional plumber who did lots of plumbing and got it so there's lots of shutoffs and everything? Yes, I hired that part out. So the water then goes all the way down. You can see it, that red line, all the way down to this corner. This corner is where some of the magic starts happening. So we then use solenoids. Now these are for sprinkler systems. It's the orbit system. This one's a two valve system. They also make them in three valve systems and you can put them together like we have done down here. We have put a bunch of them together. This manifold, each one is gonna be controlled by my phone. And I'll show you how to do that. So, water comes in, hits this manifold. Right down here, it's hooked up. We have plumbing going out. The wires come to this controller. How would you say that, Dean? Rakio? Sounds Ratio three. Uh, I think I bought it on Amazon. It was probably a hundred and some dollars. It's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi also. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, I believe. It's both. Yeah. Um, eventually, this will be mounted to the wall over here, and it has a nice faceplate and everything, and it'll look good, right? Where do we go from there? Now we have our PVC. That's what this white three-quarter inch PVC is, and it runs all the way to the other side of the building because that's the first run we did seven tanks so we're going to go over there ro tubing it goes to the pvc pipe there is ro tubing fittings it's a one quarter inch tube a one quarter inch fitting to a three quarter bushing that reduces it down to one quarter into a elbow or a t and you can see we did that at every every tank we then come through with a little bit of rigid tubing so that is do we have any of that three sixteenths yeah, it's three leaves. three sixteenths um, it's over there this is rigid tubing right here think of it as airline tubing that is hard plastic not bendy right you have to heat it up and bend it from that point right this is what we've been making. oh you've got a bunch of them made right these little elbows basically so that when the water comes in it shoots downward instead of outward. Here we've got the app. I open the app. Now all I have to do is open a zone and I'm gonna do a quick test run because I haven't programmed it all yet, but we're gonna do that. And I'm gonna hit run. Now every tote is getting water. And if you've already watched, you know the water can leave via the overflow and that's how we can automatically change water in our store, in my previous fish room, in this new fish room, and every single glass tank and pond will be set up this way. Now the flow is quite high. With the Haas manufacturing temperature controller, we can actually reduce the flow. Yeah. So Dean, right now it's at 100%, he can put it down to 10%, and if you had too high a flow in your house or your commercial building, it will allow you to adjust that. You have to listen for it. That's 10%. We're now at 10% of the maximum flow we could have. So that works great on this seven tote run. But if we do 12 or 24 in a row, we're gonna need that extra flow. This isn't a detailed tutorial on how to pull it off. That takes a little bit of, you've done a little bit of this before. I've shown that in the previous fish room builds. But basically it's PVC pipe. We're using three quarter for this project. We've also used one inch before. I've also used half inch before at the warehouse. Uh, but the key elements are temperature controller. You need solenoids to turn the water off and on. It doesn't have to be Bluetooth. You could just do it with a, uh, like a timer that you schedule for your yard. Uh, and then that's pretty much it. You know, you got water flowing to all of your tanks. And this Haas manufacturing temperature controller, it measures the temperature 60 times a second. So it's trying to dial it in and it will dial it in at 80 and hold it there, but it takes a little bit to really, for it to dial in the perfect 
mixture of hot and cold. So I'm taking this rigid airline tubing, which we have talked about. I don't know if it shows well enough, but it's made by Lee's. 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 It's yeah. very common. Three sixteenths. Yeah, three sixteenths size. Using my heat gun to make the bend, so it doesn't take very long. Just get it warm. Bend it, and I hold it, and I blow on it to cool it, and make sure it stays there. And I'll do another one. I do I do them about six at a time. The gloves are because I'm doing so many that it, my fingers get hot. I see. And I'm bending them, if you look, a little past 90 degrees. Yep. So that when they go in, we kind of, we don't get that splash. We didn't want splash in there. Right. And it goes, at, goes a lot faster than I would have thought. As you can see, I'm, I'm bending it on a long piece of pipe. Yep. And in a second, we'll show you how to cut that off. If I had cold water, yeah. it'd be instant. But now what I'm doing to put these together, just barely heating this up. So that they slide in really easy, and oh. and I get them in there really. And this is the tubing for like ice makers and RO units. RO units, ice makers, and the idea is, this is going to get squeezed in the hole that we drill. Yep. So it holds it in place. I'm basically just using PVC cutters again. You could do this with a hobby knife, but these are sitting here, and I have to make a bunch of these, so. You can do this really easy over the burner on the stove. Whether it's gas or electric, it'll still, you just need a little heat to bend this type of pipe. Larger you pipe. You just use a, like a, a lighter then. Then it turns black. I'm very particular about these things. Propane torch would work. Creme brulee torch for kitchen would work. Candle would work, but it's gonna turn black. Yeah. So. We're gonna try zone two. This is That'd the be this one, right? The maiden voice. So I kind of want to watch over there to make sure. Yeah, because if this starts coming out, we got a so oh, twelve right. on this side and twelve on that side. So we're hoping it feeds all the lines. You ready? Okay. All right, zone two. Quick run for three minutes and go. I hear it. Try. Turn back off for a second. All right. The alarm is going off. Is. Letting us know the water is too warm. Here we go, we're gonna try again. All right, let's see. And here we go. Nope. That's a scary sound. Hopefully that's just the air trying to get through there. Oh, here it comes. We got water. What? Water's starting to come. Yeah, it's the air. That's the air, yeah. All of them are getting water, it's just intermittent at the moment. Yeah, this is great. This is how loud it is all the time. Is it only at 20 right now? Is that 100% now? It's 70. 70%. Alright. That's, That's a good flow. Once it gets all the air out, it'll be super quiet. Yeah. Because this one didn't have any noise when you turned it off. Not this time, but when we very first fired it up, right. there was air okay. stuck in the valve. Yeah, That's... we'll run it up to uh, 100. Yeah, let's see what 100 looks like. We're going to troubleshoot now. 
two days later. We now have water flowing. It has now been a couple more days. The culprit of the problem we were having of loud sounds was air getting sucked in from other manifold parts. And that should go away when we finish this. So now we're just gonna keep going. But this is one of the loud ones now being quiet. We're also probably gonna do some, uh, some more backgrounds today, so. I'm gonna get started. Mm -hmm. All right, Dean, tell them what they've won. What, what have they won? So we had some issues with a lot of air in the line and we feel like it's sucking air from the open solenoids that aren't hooked up yet. And I'm working on the water system that's gonna go behind the tanks. Yep. Our flex line plugs into each one of these. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got it running all the way down um, to the far end here. Tubing we'll be using is like this and it just, it's a sh is it called shark bite? No, it's I just, call it press fit. Yeah, it's press fit or RO tubing or yeah. ice maker tubing. So it'll come down and then we've we've left it on the end so we can cap it. In case we ever add another tank or or want water somewhere. I want else. to figure out how to auto water change a brine shrimp hatchery still, but that's that's a whole another like <laughs> yeah. year down the road. Yeah, well that's that can overflow onto the sink forever. Yeah. yeah. So all the drain lines for the tanks, we make yeah. all of them at the same exact time. And all of these, make them all together. I had all of these made, which I've used almost all of them now. So we gotta make more, but that way you're not changing. Tooling or. One, you know, I do one tank. I gotta make one of these, I gotta make one of these, and that's the air, right? So it's that's three different sets of piping. Right. It's better to make, okay, let's make 12, let's make 12, let's make 12, then one, one, and one. Right. One, one, and one. Right. You know, it's coming right along though, and yeah, as he was saying, we do have air which air is screaming out of this side because we don't have enough water in it yet. But this side, we have this much water in currently. So air is coming through quite strong. And then we've got air coming in over here. And that's, that's why I want to say that air pump is way overpowered because the air is screaming through here. Right. What I wanted to basically show you guys, I've bought like every size that they've ever made. Like this one I bought originally from Gemco. It's a little bit, it's the one size smaller and it uses 0.8 amps or 0.2 amps. That one over there, 120. 120 liters per minute. So 120 is way too many. So probably what I need is I'm going to use two of ours because that's 45 liters, so about 90 liters. Right. I've had that air pump sitting in my garage not being used for like three plus years because I haven't three. had a big enough fish room again. Right. Where the small ones, like I can use that baby one we just showed plus one from my warehouse right now, and that might do it. But if you have a bunch of smaller linear piston pumps, they're modular. If I had three of these, I could probably run this system. Whereas when I have one giant one, it's too much. It's gonna give more sound off. It's gonna cost me more money every single year. So that's why we only carry the one size because most people don't run too many more than 45 aquariums. Right, and also might end up with too much back pressure. Right, you have to bleed it off and that kind of stuff and it adds more heat to the room. There's a bunch of things it does. That's why I've settled on, we're just gonna sell one because it services 90% of people and even me, I own two or three of those big ones. I own a bunch of different sizes and it's the hardest to use the large ones because they're just, you have to run a lot of outlets otherwise you can damage the pump. Even with all of this whole row wide open, it's still too powerful in the other ones, so. Well, Dean's getting a call. We gotta go back to work. So you see that little vent right there, right? And there's another one right here. I believe those are gonna be the heat recovery ventilation units, input and output, right? So it takes air in from two spots and puts air out from two spots. Also over here, we have a big old port right there and another big old one for return right over there. That's gonna be hooked up to the big uh, 3,000 square foot dehumidifier. So we mounted all of that, well by we I mean Joel mounted all that up in the attic so that we wouldn't have to hear it nearly as much. The one over there is the uh, heat recovery ventilation unit and this one right here is the big old dehumidifier that is you can see the intake and output on it thing is huge I think it's eight inches we don't have all the tubes hooked up yet because we need to uh, take out this this chimney that chimney doesn't leak but the other one does leak so 
down over there, there's another chimney that does leak. So once those come out, we can then finish installing uh, all the insulation and put those in. All right, I'm gonna crawl down without dying, hopefully. We have the first drain in and we've got the prototype for the water coming in through. So that's gonna connect right there. Water comes in, we've got back here. You can see the drain goes into that black pipe down there. Wow. That was me. That's another tape measure dead. That's the 37th one on this job. Yeah, at least. <laughs> just gonna curl around here. Mm-hmm. Plug in there. That'll be the water going in, just like we're going into all the totes right now. Yeah, so our goal today, we've been here for like an hour already, but our goal today is to get all of the tanks up on the, uh, the stand, well, the tables, I guess, but stand is really what it is. Over here, we do have a little bit of variance. I'm not worried about it, because I'm just doing top off, but all of these started filling at the same time. This one's lower than this one, and you might be like, well, it's the end of the run, that's why. Okay, well then why is this one right here not as high also? So, I'm not terribly worried about it. You know, there's, you can see this one here is lower. And then, oh, that one's turned, so I gotta turn that one up, but. You can see like this one's lower. We're not quite sure what causes that yet. So I just wanted to chime in. I disconnected the behemoth and connected just the one little one and it's like silent. Dean didn't even know I had plugged it in yet. And at the moment, it's still running all of the... 31. What? There's 31 of them running. Right? Yeah, it's running 31 pawns at the moment. Now obviously it's only made to run about 45 and we're gonna run more than 45 so that's why I'm gonna run two. But the thing I had never actually tested was how loud, so like two of these is gonna be way quieter than this beast. And it was, it's been driving me nuts all week going, even from up there I could hear it a little bit. While Dean is very much attention to visual, I am 110% attention to audio. Because I know it just, I, I can't stand being in loud rooms. And so I want to make a fish room as quiet as we can. Which is going okay. You never lift tanks like this, by the way. Yeah, don't do what Dean's doing. I try to help him. Every time I turn my back, he's got to go He-Man on me. We're down to the last three. That's right. I need to make one more of these little, um, what are we going to call this? Like the input spout or whatever you want to call it? Yeah. 3 16 thin wall lees tubing. Yep. You can probably buy it on Amazon. Pretty soon you'll be able to buy the aquarium co op because we got about 5 billion. I did buy a lot of those, but not that many. So, heat gun. Yep. Open flame will work. Don't use a candle or a match or a cigarette lighter because it'll turn it black. But I just turn it on. Turn it. I'm going to heat up about 3 inch area. Wow, that's getting real melty real quick. Yeah, it, it, it bends pretty quickly. I want it pretty liquidy because I'm trying to make a nice, even bend. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, we ready? I'm ready to follow. Hold on, I gotta use the bathroom. No, I'm just kidding. So I'm going through the hole. Is it super hot? It's very hot. I'm gonna pry it out a little bit and then just let this fall right there. Then I'm going to blow on it. See, the water is going to come in. It's going to spray out a little bit, mm -hmm. not a lot. And we also want to keep this above our water line, so we can't possibly get back siphoning. Yep. I'm going to cut, cut this. Fit, I'm going to yeah. cut it off about here, and we're going to hook the pipe up to it. By the way, Dean figured out why some of these are filling at different rates. I did. Because when he bent the pipe, if it's a slightly different diameter, it would restrict a little bit, and over the course of like a couple of hours that would do that. So we can replace them if we feel like it. I'm not bothered by it, uh, but it was smart, he figured it out, so. Later that same evening. Not bad. I was worried it was gonna spray out maybe, but we're all filling at the same time. My favorite, this is my favorite feeling when it's like, you get to complete 12 tanks at once or 24 tanks at once, because it takes so long, but. Yeah, you can see all of them are just getting. Yeah. Not bad. It's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, not bad. Awesome. 
This is what it's all about. Yeah, knowing that this will happen forever now. I hit yeah. a button, water changes happen. Yep. Crazy. Now he's got to line the lights. That's the next thing I'm going to do tonight. Yep. I can probably get that done before we go. Yep. So once these get filled up, we'll turn the air on. And uh, right now it's still running off just a little pump. So I'm hoping we can do maybe it'd be really cool to do it all. But I have a feeling yeah, I have to add the little small one. All of those can be turned down because yeah, they're still flowing pretty good. Yeah. So we'll see how it pans out. All right, it's another day. It's mid afternoon. We've got. More plumbing. It's basically what we've been doing. It's not really worth showing, giving the same repetitive task over and over and over again. All the tanks are set up. We're starting to put substrate in them, starting to try and clear them up from the backgrounds which cloud the water, waiting for temperatures to come up, cosmetic things. Um, yeah, you can see that room still still mess from building. Got some artwork. I don't know if I've ever shown this artwork on camera. This artwork here has Hank, my original Mabu Puffer. And then we've got um, Wincy, Sassy, and Tinky is a little fish. And then you have Katie and I. So you've got Katie as a mermaid, and you've got me in that decoration. My face is in there. So we had this done by one of our friends. So that'll be hanging up here. We've got the aquarium co-op light. We've got to hang a bunch of stuff to go. Printer arrived. Yeah, I got another carpet in today, or another rug. So rug number two is in. But now I'm going to get back to work, and uh, once at once the end of the day, I'll probably film a members-only video in here. So if you're not a member, become one. All right, we're out here working on the drain. Who knows what type of, like, inf not amphibian, reptile this is. Like, I don't want to call it a skink, a lizard, I guess, of some type. I'm really uneducated. I, I called it a salamander at first, but now it's going towards Dean. But yeah, this at this point, we've got... The elbow coming out. We've got some slope, and we're going to continue that slope all the way down to the other drain. We're not going to finish it today. Uh, and then we're thinking long term, we're going to take this out to kind of the the grass and do a drain field. So originally we were planning to like try and filter it a bunch, make sure it, nothing could get into the waterway that's down here. And instead, we're going to basically come down here dig in, go around the corner. So the goal is if we can work out the slope right, get it all the way down to here, dig it out, bring it around, and so that way water won't go in here. Instead, we'll drain it out into the yard under the ground. So if a fish or anything ever got out, which it shouldn't because we have screens and all that stuff, but if something ever did happen, it would then be underground and the water will just filter through the ground kind of naturally and yeah maybe some gets back over there but it probably just waters my grass really well which yes I'm aware it's like the first sunny day we already need to be uh, 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 I was gonna say vacuuming <laughs> mowing so there we go